as you can see guys, the engine light came on. And so I got one of these cool things, OBD2 readers to read the codes. This is a OBD2 reader from Ansel. It diagnoses issues with ease and it's quite affordable. So I would highly recommend getting one of these if you ever have any engine lights come on on your dash panel. Now it comes with a USB cable. I'm not really sure what that's for yet. This does get powered on by your vehicle as you can see in the video and it comes with an instruction manual. So the thing's quite easy to use. It comes with a lot of other features as well that you could find handy. So let's show you guys what I need to do now that I got the codes. So as you can see, that code was a P0302, cylinder two misfire detected. Now, if you get a code like that, P030 and then a number, and in my case, a two, that means that the second cylinder is the one that's misfiring. If it was like a three or four, then it's a third or fourth cylinder and so on that's misfiring. So a couple causes for that is that you have a bad spark plug or you have a bad coil assembly. So one of those two needs to get fixed. So for me, the cheaper option so far is just to replace all of the spark plugs at the moment and we'll see if that fixes the issue. And if not, then we'll switch out the coils. Now there are a variety of brands and kinds of different spark plugs that you can get. The kind that I got are from NGK and these are the Iridium kind. Once you find the spark plug that you wanna use for your vehicle, check out the different kinds of spark plugs like Iridium or the other kinds out there. And Iridium is one of the very best ones that you can buy. So we're gonna try these. They should work very well. These are the ones that I have used before in the past without any issues. So the part number on this for a Jeep 2013 Patriot is ZFR5. FIX-11 and a number 2477. You can also see it on the spark plug here and I'll show you guys obviously the pictures. So in order to get started, I'll put this back in the box until I'm ready to use it. To get started here, you're just gonna need to lift off this engine cover of your 2013 Jeep Patriot and everything is gonna be quite simple. What you're gonna need as well, obviously a socket, socket right here. This is going to be a 5H one that's going to fit on the spark plugs that I got, probably will fit on the same one that you have. And then you're gonna need some kind of extender so you can get down into the hole there to get the spark plug out, okay? Okay, the, so the 2013 Jeep Patriot has this engine cover, which is quite simple to remove. All you need to do is just lift it up and it'll pop off. Sometimes I notice other Jeep Patriots might not even have an engine cover at all, which makes it even a little bit easier in that case. But yeah, that just slides off. I'll set it over here for now. And as you can see, the spark plugs are right here. One, two, three, four, it's a four cylinder engine, four spark plugs. So these are gonna be very easy to access. So as you can see, all of these spark plugs have a screw in there that hold down the coils here. And you're going to need a screwdriver bit like this or some kind of bit here like that. I'm not really sure what size that is, but I think if you have a, an accessory or a few of them, you're gonna find the right size for that. But it's gonna be a star bit here. So let's go ahead and start taking one off at a time and replacing it by just turning that screw until it comes out. I'll put it up here and here. You're gonna just have to, actually you're gonna have to unplug this because you can't pull it out. The wire is not gonna give you enough slack here. So go ahead and get the connector off. You wanna be careful that you don't break it either. And what I did is just use a small little flathead to kind of lift up on that lip there to get it out. So as you can see, there you have one of the coil packs here. And now we're gonna take the socket, drop it down in there until it catches, and then just turn it so it breaks loose and then you start taking it out. It actually come out pretty easy with your hand. They shouldn't be in there super tight either. Unscrew it as much as you can. And then I have a trick to get down in there and to get the spark plug out. If you guys have one of these telescoping magnets like this, then you can just go ahead and extend it, reach down in there basically, and the spark plug comes out super easy like that. Go ahead and inspect them maybe. So these are actually iridium ones like I showed you before. Let's show you before and after here. This is a used one obviously. You can see it's not in too bad of a shape here. A little bit of discoloration and stuff, but this is what it looks like next to a brand new one. Go ahead and set the bad ones up there. Then I'll just take this, Put it back on my magnet basically. Drop it in there. And then get your socket, kind of fit it down in the hole, hand tighten it a little bit here so you don't cross thread anything or break anything either. And you wanna make sure you torque these down properly. So check your manual for 
the, tr the proper torque specs. And then once you got that seated in there, go ahead and put your coil pack back down in there like that. And you should have a little bit of a springiness there so that you make contact with your spark plug. I'll go ahead and put the connector back on and then screw that down. I'll show you guys one more because I think maybe the first frame probably didn't work so well. I moved the camera a little bit, but like I said, you just take one screw out, take the connector off. Quite easy there, right? First, you have to take it out and loosen it up. That was not so bad. I don't know what this little particle is here. We'll take pictures of all four of those later and get your new spark plug out. And by the way, I forgot to mention this, but you're gonna need some kind of thickness measurement gauge, feeler gauge, or a spark plug gauge here to measure the gap. I already did this before I filmed the video. Check your specs. I'll put the specs up on the screen for the 2013 Jeep Patriot, what you need to put as your spark plug gap, but they are already gapped properly. There's a short little range of what you need them to be in. I can't remember what that is, 0 0.1, 1 1.24 millimeters to 1.37 or something like that. All right, snug that in there like that. All right, put this one back in. See that little springiness? That's what you want. Screw that back down in there. Okay, there you have it. Just go ahead and do the rest and I'll come back to you guys in a little bit. Well, the engine light did go off. It's not on anymore and the engine started. So that's the first step. Spark plugs are in, right? And engine is running pretty good, it seems like. Let's go ahead and go back to this OBD2 reader here. Go to enter, let it do its thing. Hit enter again. Go to ECU1 and let's just read codes again. Let's just see what happens. Okay, yep, the code is still there. We'll go ahead and erase the code. Clear, reset, emission, related diagnostic information. Are you sure? Yes, so we'll hit enter. Please turn engine on with engine off. Press enter key to continue, okay? So, I'm gonna turn the engine off. And we're just gonna turn it on to the on position. And now, let's go back and continue. Processing, emission, related diagnostic information has been cleared. Perfect. So, obviously the engine light's on because the engine is not running. Let's go ahead and turn it on again. Engine light goes away immediately. And let's go back to read codes just in case something is there. Vehicle has no fault code. Perfect. All right, perfect, guys. That was such an easy fix that basically pretty much took me 15 minutes to switch all four spark plugs. But this little thing did its thing. It was able to clear the code, read the codes, and speed up the process to figure out what's wrong so that you don't have to waste a lot of money going to dealerships just to do this check and change your spark plugs when it's such an easy one person job. So if you guys want more information on this, on the LBD2 reader that I'm using and the spark plugs and the spark plug gap and everything that I use, I'll put links in the description so that you guys can find them quite easily. And if you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe if you want. And if you guys want more of this content, let me know in the comment section. If you got any questions, let me know there as well. We'll see you guys in the next video.